Oh, yeah. But it's move. Hi everyone, welcome to part one of the BMW M5 engine build and uh, today is finally the day that we're going to start to assemble the parts, stock everything to spec and making this engine to look a little bit more like an actual engine rather than just parts. However, I want to point something out to you guys, if you're new to the channel, even though this video is called part number one, there is a video called part zero and I'm gonna put the link in the description here down below and make sure you watch that video afterwards because that is in fact what I consider to be the most crucial steps in an engine build process and today is the day. So without further ado, let's start working on this beautiful engine. Okay, so first things first. I had this block wrapped up and it was specked away on the corner of the shop there. Same thing with the crankshaft, same thing with the caps, and this is the last opportunity you have to clean everything even further to what we cleaned before, because all the stuff that you've seen on part zero of the video was done about four days ago. So let's go. Now the first things that go into the engine are the oil squirters. They are simply placed into the holes and the bolts are torqued to 10 Nm. Now with the oil squirters in, the next thing I'm going to do is to put the bearings back into the block because again, we had put them on previously in order to check all the clearance but because we had to wash the block, I remove all of them, I just like to do it that way. They are properly identified by the cap number, so this one is number one. The cap numbers go from the front of the engines to the back. So number one is here, right next to your timing chain, where the timing chain goes. Then you got number two, number three, one is the one with the truss washer. Then you got number four and five at the very back of the engine here. So let's put the bearings back in place. Now, with the bearings done, uh, next step is to put some assembly lube on it. And I used Redline for probably four or five years, so I really like this stuff. This video is not sponsored by anyone. By the way, I'm not being given money or anything. It's just Now, the next step is to bring on the crankshaft and carefully place it onto the block. Main bearings. Ah. See, that's what you want to feel when you put the crankshaft in. Smooth. Now, one thing you got to be careful is uh, you do not want any lube or anything around this area, and uh, because this is where the caps are going to sit. So make sure you double check and ensure that these are 100% clean. Now, the next step is to put the crank caps on. I do have them separated here. 
Just one thing that is uh, worthwhile mentioning is they obviously number, so they one to five. So again, number one is at the very front of the engine here and number five is at the very back. The way I normally remember is the numbers are facing this side of the engine, which is uh, cylinders five to eight. And I'm standing in front of cylinder one to four. And this is how I can properly read the numbers. You should not put them the other way around. Now, quick thing regarding these guys. Let me see if I can get the camera to focus, but if you haven't touched these and they're the same way as you remove them from the engine, uh, these are the so-called supported sleeves. Can you see how they are a little bit far from that? Let me see, can you focus? Yes. So this is nothing but a screw. It's like a screw in there. This is an adjustable screw, and then we're gonna put another screw across it. So what you have to do before we put the caps on, we're gonna have to rewind it or, or retrieve it, because if I, if I screw in, see how it comes up? So this is just so the cap touch the block on the right angle. So we're gonna have to rewind this one completely, this one, same thing. Undo it. We install the caps onto the block, and once they're installed onto the block, we're gonna come back here and uh, screw this in until we touch the block again, then we put six new two meters onto this guy before we put in the other screw that goes crossing it. Uh, this cap is number five, so it's going to go right here, but before I put them on, let's get some assembly lube onto it. And what I usually do is, I use the two big bolts to guide the caps onto its position. Now, I put them in, I'm still, no, I'm still holding the cap, I'm gonna start to thread them in by hand because the last thing that you want is to cross thread this. You, you, <laughs> you make yourself a massive headache. Now, once I put them on maybe five or four turns, now I'm gonna use the power wrench. And this is an E14, this is an e torx 14. Now the power wrench is just going to drive the thread in because I don't wanna spend 20 minutes doing that. You do not want to use the power wrench to actually drive it and, and torque it in. So now that it's in, I'm going to use just a normal wrench and I'm going to hand tight them until both sides of the cap have seated correctly. So now we move on to the other caps and we're going to do exactly the same thing for all of them. Okay, now with the caps installed, we're ready to start torquing the boats. There are different torque settings for all the boats, and the reason why some people are still frightening for them is because these stock OEM uh, BMW boats uh, require a specific amount of torque plus some angle rotation. Uh, in this particular case, the main ones are torqued to 20 Nm plus 115 degrees of rotation, which is what we are going to do right now. So setting the torque range to 20 Nm, I'm going to do the first one, which is the center cap. That's the cap number three. There is a special sequence for you to tighten the bolts to ensure that the load is distributed across the entire crankshafts. In order to do that, we're going to do this is the first bolt we're going to torque, 20 Nm. And this is the second one, 20 Nm. And now we are going to put 115 degrees of rotation. And in order to do that, I'm gonna use this guy here. This is just a cheap part from eBay. I think I pay $15 for it. I pay more in freight than actually the two cost me. <laughs> in order to assist me on setting this up properly, I'm gonna use this boat. So I'm just gonna thread this to the side over there. Let me grab some adapters. And I love this guy. This is my big one. 
my big one. Yeah. All right, All right. get this guy out of there. Get this guy in here. Um, place them in there. 15. Okay, it is a lot easier if you use something like this rather than try to get a small wrench and keep trying to talk them up. I would recommend you doing with the proper tools if, you, if you're trying to do this, this kind of job. But anyway, pop this in there. Is at zero, now 115. Here we go. Yeah. Beautiful, moving on to the next one. 115. Ready, steady, go. That completes the main boats. And now we're gonna move on to the next boats, which are the M8 by 70. We talked them out on the exact same sequence as we talked the M11s, which are the ones we've done just now. Next in line are going to be what BMW call the threaded support sleeves. Firstly, I'm going to tie them all by hand, make sure they are properly sitting on the block, and then I'm going to grab the torque wrench. These are torqued to 6 Nm and that will ensure a proper connection between the bearing caps and the block. It also reinforces the whole thing. Now, this funny bolt is what BMW calls the angle screw connection to the crankcase, and it's an M8 by 37. Now, these guys are going to be torqued exactly the same as the other bolts, and uh, they require 10 mm plus 45 degrees of rotation. And that is a crankshaft installed exactly as it should. Now moving on to the last measurement, we need to fit this dial indicator to the block and check how much play or how much side clearance the crankshaft is going to have. BMW recommends a clearance of 0.08 and 0.24 millimeters. And I know the high number won't be that accurate because we use assembly lube around the truss bearing, which is going to limit a little bit the plate. But as long as we are higher than 0.08, I'm happy. Now I push the crank forward and hit the 0.09. I bring it back to me and hit the zero again. So I did that once or twice and I can see the clearance is more than enough. Another job well done. Now if we've done everything properly, now we should be able to do one of the most satisfying things you do once you put a crank in the block, which is the crank test. Oh, yeah, but it's smooth. Beautiful. Okay, chop chop, enough for part number one. So this is how you successfully install a crankshaft into a block. Uh, whether you have an S63 or an N63 engine, the process is going to be exactly the same because they share the same block. No. Just before you go, I want to share something that happened today. I was quite stupid, all right, because of what I'm doing. Yes. I went for lunch with this very uh, successful guy. He's very business-minded, he's a friend of mine. And uh, I was talking to him how I'm making this series of videos and uh, putting it on YouTube. And he said, well, you shouldn't do it that way. You should 
block your channel, charge a membership and put these videos only for people who are paying the membership, which I understand, yes, from a business point of view, this, it makes a lot of sense. I told him, no, I'm not doing it. The reason why I create the channel in the first place, the reason why I'm doing this series of videos is to help anyone, regardless of they have money, they're going to pay for membership, they not. So if you do have a BMW, we already share something in common and therefore you are my friends, so I'm here to help. And when I tried to explain this to him, he didn't really get it. Maybe that's the reason why he's so successful. Uh, nevertheless, uh, if you guys think these videos are helpful, give us a like. If you think these videos are super helpful, super like. That's going to help the channel grow even further to what we are today. So nevertheless, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next.